Hi everybody, welcome to story time. I'm so happy to be with you today. I hope you have had a wonderful Monday and a wonderful Tuesday. The weather has just been so nice, hasn't it? Oh, on the weekend it was beautiful. And did you happen to see the beautiful sky on Saturday night? Oh my goodness, it was so pretty. I just wanted to stand there and look at it and look at it and look at it. It was beautiful. And it's another week that has come and it is story time again. Wow, it is just flying by, isn't it? Yes, and you're getting closer and closer to Thanksgiving break. It's just around the corner. Do you know that this week, tomorrow, on hump day, I'm going to have a birthday? Yes, I was born in 1959. I know that's a long time ago. 61 years ago, I was born. And on the day that I was born, born in Canada, it snowed and it was below zero. <laughs> That's cold, isn't it? Yes, it is. So it's not uncommon for us to have snow in November. But my daddy was afraid that he wouldn't be able to get my mama to the hospital. So they took my mom in early so that I would be there and mama would be there when I came. So on November 11th, 1959, I was born on a very, very, very cold night. <laughs> yes, I was. Oh my goodness. And now I've grown up and look at all the things that I've been able to do with my life. And so if you're watching me tonight and you're little, you've got all kinds of things that you can do with your life while well, I've been able to like travel to all different countries to India and Egypt and Zimbabwe, Malawi, the Congo, Zambia. Oh my goodness. Wow. And I've been able to travel in the United States and see all kinds of things. And so you've got great opportunities ahead of you. And even though I'm 61, and if you're little, you think I'm really old, I still have a lot more things to do. So those of you that are watching me that are my age or you're older, don't you stop exploring and doing new things with your life. Yes, you got lots and lots of things ahead of you. When I was born, I never ever thought that I would go to the mission fields and I never thought that I could be a part of helping children learn in school. I mean, I just didn't think that would happen. I didn't think that I could be a part of making sure that children get food and families get food. And just, I never thought that my life would care for people the way it does, but I wouldn't want it any other way. So you keep working because there are great, great things planned for your life too. And as you grow, all kinds of things will start to happen. So I encourage you, which I didn't do, but I encourage you to kind of like keep a diary of fun things and things that you explore and places that you go in a book so that one day you can look back when you turn 61 and see all the fun things that you were able to do. Well, we better get into our story or you're going to be going to bed late and your mama is going to be, Pastor, why did you keep my boy and my girl up so late? So we better get reading, huh? And I've got a great, great story for you tonight. It's called The Kitten Who Thought He Was a mouse. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And look at, look at this picture. The kitten who thought he was a mouse. 
I've still been thinking about our elephant last week. Um, I just love that story. But this week, it's the kitten who thought he was a mouse. <laughs> a kitten is a whole lot bigger than a mouse, isn't it? Yeah, a mouse will like fit right in your hand and a kitten only will for a little while and then it's going to grow into, yep, you guessed it, a cat. <laughs> so let me get my reading glasses on here and we're going to get ready to go and read to you a story. There were five Mixes, Mother and Father Mix and Lester and his two sisters. There they are. There's the Megsis family. Aren't they cute? I do actually like mice. I, I think they're cute. But I don't like it when they get in my house. That I don't like. But I do think they're cute. I think chipmunks are cute too. They had, as field mice usually do, an outdoor nest for the summertime in an empty lot and an indoor nest for winter in a nearby house. And that's when they try to get in. They go and leave you alone in the summer, but in the winter time, if you're not careful, you're going to start to hear like some scratching noises in the wall. And sure enough, you got yourself some mice who found a house to live in. They were very surprised one summer day to find a very strange bundle in their nest. A small gray and black bundle of fur and ears and legs with eyes that were not yet open. They knew by its mewing that the bundle must be a kitten, a lost kitten with no family and no name. There it is. And even though it's a kitten, look how big it is already compared to those mice. Poor kitty said the sisters. Please, please let him stay with us. Please, said Lester. But a cat, said Mother Miggs. Why not, said Father Miggs. Why not? There they are. Why not? Can you think of reasons why not? <laughs> we can bring him up to be a good mouse. He need never find out that he is really a cat. You'll see. He'll be a good thing for this family, father said. Let's call him Mikey, said Lester. And that's how Mikey Mix found his new family and a name. After his eyes opened, Mikey began to grow up just as mice do, eating all kinds of seeds and bugs, drinking from puddles, and sleeping in a cozy pile of brother and sister mice. And there he is, all cuddled up with his brothers and his sisters. Mmm. I don't know. I think that that might be Lester. What do you think? And I think this might be his sisters. <laughs> Lester sure looks happy if that's him, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, he's even smiling in his sleep. Father Miggs showed him his first tomcat at a safe distance and wanted him to keep away from all cats and dogs and people. He told him, don't go near dogs and cats and people. 
Mikey saw his very first mouse trap. The most dangerous thing of all, said Mother Miggs, when they moved to the indoor nest that fall. But there's the tomcat, and there's Daddy telling him, don't go near that. <gasps> and there's the mouse trap. Oh, stay away from that. That is going to get you in big trouble. He was too clumsy to steal bait from the traps himself, so Lester and the sisters had to share with him what they stole. And if you've ever put out a mouse trap, sometimes you'll go and they will have stole all the cheese you put on there and they take off with it and leave the mouse trap. Sometimes I hear Jerry going, they took the bait. <laughs> <clears throat> and that is not fun at all. So there they are sharing what the sisters and Lester got from the mouse trap. They stole the food. But Mikey was useful in fooling the household cat, Hazel. <laughs> he practiced up on meowing. For usually, of course, he squeaked and became clever at what he thought was imitating a cat. <laughs> Isn't that funny? He had to learn to do what he was because the mice had taught him to squeak like a mouse. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that funny? And there's Daddy Mouse, and he's playing the violin. <laughs> I think that's funny. He would hide in a dark corner, and then, meow, meow, he'd cry. Hazel would poke around, leaving the pantry shelves unguarded while she looked for the other cat. That gave Lester and his sisters a chance to make a raid on the leftovers. Poor Hazel. She knew she heard, even smelled another cat. And sometimes she was sure she saw a cat's eyes shining in a corner, but no cat ever came out to meet her. Here's Mikey hiding in a shadow. And there is Lester and his sisters right in the pantry of the leftovers. Oh, he's got a big hunk of cheese in his hands. <laughs> and there he is smiling. <laughs> Mikey is pretty good, huh? How could she know that Mikey didn't know he was a cat at all and that he feared Hazel as much as the mousiest mouse would? Hazel didn't know that Mikey thought he was a mouse. And so Mikey Miggs grew, becoming a better mouse all the time and just enjoying his life. He loved cheese, he loved bacon, and he especially loved cake crumbs. Oh, wow. Look at him. He's just having a blast. He got especially good at smelling out potato skins and that's where we seen him in the bucket with potato skins and led the sisters and Lester straight to them every single time. A wholesome and uncat-like food, said Mother Miggs to Father Miggs approvingly. Mikey is doing well. Mikey is doing a good job said Father Miggs. And Father Miggs said to Mother Miggs, I told you so. <laughs> look at, look at them watching. 
They're watching him lead them. Yep. See the potato pills? Peel. Peels. Not pills. Peels. <laughs> then one day, coming from a nap in the waste paper basket, Mikey met the children of the house, Peggy and Paul. Eek! Mikey squeaked in terror. He dashed along the walls of the room looking for his mouse hole. It's a kitten! It's a kitten! It's a kitten! cried Peggy as Mikey squeezed through the hole. But, but it acts like a mouse, said Paul. Look at, there he goes, squeezing through his mouse hole. <laughs> it's going to have to be a pretty big hole pretty soon, huh? The children could not understand why the kitten had been so mouse-like, but they decided to try to make friends with him. Would you have? I would have. I would have tried to make friends. That night, as Mikey came out of his hole, he nearly tripped over something lying right there in front of him. He sniffed at it. <laughs> it was a dish, and in the dish was something to drink. <laughs> what do you think it is? What do you think that is in there? I think I might know what's in there. What is it? asked Mikey. Lester didn't know, but timidly tried a little. No good, no good, he said, shaking his whiskers. Mikey tried it, and Mikey tried some more, and then Mikey then tried some more, and then some more, and then some more, and then some more, until Mikey had drank it all. It was all gone. Mmm, 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 he said. What wonderful stuff. It's probably poison and you'll get sick said Lester disgustedly, but it wasn't poison. And Mikey had a lovely, lovely feeling in his stomach from drinking it. It was milk. Oh, kittens love milk, don't they? Of course. And every night that week, Mikey found a saucer of milk outside that same hole. He would lap up every drop of it and then his belly would feel so good. He drank it and he drank it, cried Peggy and Paul happily each morning. <gasps> Oh, he drank it, he drank it. He's coming out to drink the milk, they said. They began to set out a saucer filled with milk in the daytime, too. At first, Mikey would drink the milk only when he was sure that Peggy and Paul were nowhere around. But soon... He grew bolder and began to trust them in the room with him. That's how you make friends with a stray cat right there. There's his brother and sisters all around him. Oh, he's just having fun. Look at Lester. Lester is not happy with him at all. Look at that. <laughs> Lester's not happy. And soon, Mikey began to let them come nearer and nearer and nearer still. Then one day, he found himself scooped up and held in Peggy's arms. It was funny because 
he didn't feel scared. He felt fine. And all of a sudden, he felt a queer noise rumble up his back and went all through him. And it was Mikey's very first purr. <laughs> he didn't know what to do with that, did he? Peggy and Paul took Mikey to a shiny glass on the wall and held him close in front of it. Mikey, who had never seen a mirror, saw a cat staring at him there. A cat in Paul's hands where he thought he was. He was in Paul's hands. And there was a cat in the mirror in Paul's hands. Mikey all of a sudden started to cry. And his cry, instead of being a squeak, was a mewing wail. He wasn't quick, quick, quick. He was meowing. Look at, there he is, scooped up in Paul's arms. And there he is in the mirror. Isn't he just the cutest thing ever? I just love gray kitties. He's getting to see himself for the very, very first time. Finally, Mikey began to understand that he was not a mouse like Lester and his sisters, but, but he was a cat like Hazel. He stayed with Peggy and Paul that night, trying not to be afraid of his own cat self. He still didn't quite believe it all. However, and next morning, he crept back through his old hole straight to Mother Miggs. Am I, am I really a cat? He cried. Yes, yes, yes you are, said Mother Miggs sadly. And she told Mikey the whole story of how he was adopted and brought up as a mouse. We loved you so much, Mikey, and wanted you to love us so much. It was the only safe and fair way to bring you up was to bring you up as us like a mouse, even though you were a cat. There they are having a chat. Isn't it nice that Mama was honest with him? Yeah. And he really, look at his face. He, he really wanted to know, am, am I a cat? After talking with Mother Miggs, Mikey decided to be a cat in all cat ways. He now lives with Peggy and Paul, who also love him and who can give him lots of good milk <laughs> and who are not afraid of his purr or his meow. Mikey can't really forget his upbringing, though. However, he takes an old rubber mouse of Peggy's to bed with him every single night. There he is, and there's his mouse. Kind of looks like Lester, doesn't it? <laughs> he often visits the Megsis in the indoor nest 
where he nibbles cheese tidbits and squeaks about old times. <laughs> so Mikey knows two languages. He knows cat language and he knows mice language. He is a pretty smart cat, isn't he? And of course, he sees to it that Hazel no longer prowls in the pantry at night so that his friends can have lots of food. There they are. <laughs> They're all eating together, talking together. Isn't it great that they all still stayed friends? I think that that's just awesome. Oh, I'm so fat and so stuffed from eating so much in Hazel's pantry. Father Miggs often says happily to Mother Miggs, I always said our Mikey would be a good thing for the family. And he is. <laughs> Look at them in their beds. And they got a picture of their friend, Mikey the kitten. What a great story, huh? But it's so important for us to be who God made us to be. And I'm glad that Mikey finally found out that he was a cat. And I'm also glad that Mikey found out that he could also be friends with others that might not be just like him and that he could be helpful too. And he was, and look at how many people he made happy. He made the Migs happy and he made his friends happy. That's what life is all about. So maybe you might be a little different from a friend or somebody else still be kind, still bless them. Maybe you're a different color than them. That doesn't matter. Maybe they speak a different language than you do. Maybe they have a different accent. Maybe they come from a different country than you came from. No matter who it is, we can be kind, can't we? And we can be helpful. And Mikey, was a very, very kind, helpful mouse, kitten, cat, <laughs> wasn't he? Well, my friends, it's time for us to say goodbye. It's time for you to climb into bed. Make sure that you grab a special toy and you wrap your arms around and hug it just like Mikey did. It will remind you of Mama. It'll remind you of Daddy. It will remind you of Jesus. It'll give you something to hang on to. I guess I don't sleep with a stuffed animal. I used to when I was little, but now I like to hug my big pillow and put my head on it like this. Yeah. And so when I do that, it's very comforting. So however you feel comforted, you make sure that you do that. Okay. Yeah, and now it's time for our good night hug. Are you ready? No, yeah, it's going to have to be a big one because we have to reach a long ways. When I think about how far Daniel lives from me, I have to hug really hard so it will reach him. And some of you live closer to me, like Jordan, so... I have to make sure that everybody that I'm going to hug is going to be here. And Levi and Owen, they live just as far as Daniel does. So we have got to hug really hard if we're going to reach all of our friends, aren't we? Yes, we're going to we're going to have to hug hard. So are you ready for all of us to give each other a good night hug? Now, all you kids, you're not the only ones who watches story time. We have some grandmas that watch story time. And so we can't forget them either, okay? So are you ready? Oh, and I almost forgot. Do you know that sometimes Bright, who lives all the way in Africa, I find out 
He's watched our story time. So we got to hug really hard because we all have to reach all the way to Africa. So he gets a hug too. All right. Okay. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> I kind of sounded like an elephant, didn't I? Yeah, I did. <laughs> that was a good hug. And I think we got all the way to Africa. Well, I want you to know that tomorrow's hump day. You're almost through another week and you can do it. Keep doing your homework. Keep practicing because I want you to be as smart as you can be, okay? And you're going to get there when you work hard. And working hard just makes you feel really, really good. When I work hard... At the end of the day, I'm just, I'm just so excited because it makes me feel good. So tonight, I want you to know that I love you oh, all the way to the moon. Yeah, all the way around Jupiter and Mars. And I'm going to even add in Venus tonight because... I really, really love you tonight. And I love you shooshing around the Milky Way all the way back into my heart. You're the best. And if somebody is telling you that you're not, you listen to me, okay? Because you are the best. And if there's anything that you think you can't do, Jesus said, in Philippians 4.13, that you, it says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So tonight when you go to bed and you give Jesus a hug, you tell him about your concern, okay? And tell him, your word says, you will help me to do this. You will strengthen me to do this. And I'm believing you to do it. And then you let me know because he's going to help you take care of it. All right? All right. And make sure if you're struggling that you talk to your mommy and your daddy, okay? And if there's anything that we can do in the CROSS program, you let us know with your school and we'll be there to help you, okay? Ah, just love you bunches and bunches and bunches and bunches and bunches more. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week. I'll see you on Tuesday. And know this, it's almost gobble day. Yes, it is. Gobble, gobble. I have this little sign that says, gobble till you wobble. <laughs> it's almost Thanksgiving. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.